It's Ken O'Keefe in Gaza. You know, in this Orwellian world of ours, it's oh so nice to have some refreshing honesty. And, uh, well, we were watching something really quite interesting yesterday, me and Max. You know, when I saw this clip yesterday, I, I thought it was comedy. You know, we've all, we all know that there's been false flag events staged right throughout history. It's been replete throughout history. We've had the Lusitania, we've had Gulf of Tonkin, we've had the Maine. These go way back as far as Nero burning Rome. But sometimes you see something and it, it just boggles the mind. And as I was saying, when I first saw this clip, I had to recheck it actually three times just to make sure that it wasn't comedy. I thought I was watching The Onion or something like that. I saw it and I thought, there's no way this can be real. But it turns out that it is real. And uh, we're going to show you this clip and see what you think about this. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall we had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked, which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. Uh, one can combine other means of pressure with sanctions. Uh, I mentioned that explosion uh, on August 17th. Uh, we could step up the pressure. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> we can do a variety of things if we wish to increase the pressure. I'm not advocating that. But I'm just suggesting that uh, it, it, it's, this, this is not a, a either-or proposition. Of, you know, it's just sanctions has to, has to succeed or other things. We are in the game of using covert means against the Iranians. We, we could get nastier at that. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. Crisis initiation? Uh, we're trying to initiate crisis? And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. My heart breaks. I know we all want war, and my heart breaks. The president can't get us to war. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. I don't know, I thought peace and prosperity was good for U.S. interests. Perhaps I'm old-fashioned. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II. Yeah, yeah, I thought that. What about you, Ken? Did you think that? Yeah, yeah, I thought that too. Is that why Roosevelt sent all the valuable ships to the West Coast and left all the crappy ones in Pearl Harbor and sacrificed all those sailors? Oh, that's it. Oh. As David mentioned, you may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. So I guess that's why they sent the Lusitania, which was a passenger ship, into a war zone, packed the hole with explosives, even after they had warnings from the Germans not to send it in there. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall they had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Gulf of Tonkin, they made that one up. It didn't even exist. It was just complete fabrication. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. So it wasn't the Spanish. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack.
As you would. I mean, of course, it supports U.S. policy, doesn't it? So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. Well, after all, war with Iran is in the American interest, so I think Israel should help us out, eh? One can combine other means of pressure with sanctions. Uh, I mentioned that explosion uh, on August 17th. Uh, we could step up the pressure. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> we can do a variety of things if we wish to increase the pressure. I'm not advocating that. <laughs> I'm not advocating that. Would you advocate that, Max? I would never advocate that. Of course, that's probably why they mentioned it. We wouldn't advocate that. No, no never, never. But I'm just suggesting that uh, it, it, it's this. <laughs> this is not a, a either-or proposition. Of, you know, it's just sanctions has to has to succeed or other things. Other things, like everything you just talked about. We are in the game of using covert means against the Iranians. It's like chess. It's just like a game of chess. Absolutely, that's all it is. You know, I mean, it's just all life on planet Earth. Like, you know, a game of chess. Yeah, you make a move, you make a move. That's yeah. it. That's all it is. That's all it is. We, we could get nastier at that. Yeah, yeah, you... Nasty? No, we've only just begun. 9-11, that's just an appetizer. They're just getting warmed up. Just getting warmed up. So, folks, what do you say to a clip like that? Like I said, when I first saw that, I thought it was a comedy routine. I can't believe that they're just out there saying that. They're saying, look, folks, and bear in mind that everything that he just mentioned was a false flag attack. We had to do all of these things, and now we're having lobbies where we're filming it in public and we're telling you what we're going to do. We're saying we're going to stage false flag attacks, folks, and you're not even going to notice because that's what we do now, and you don't notice anyway. So, I mean, it, it just boggles the mind. Yeah, you know, Max, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a game, isn't it? it it's uh, as, as big new Brzezinski's uh, grand chessboard. It's, it's just like uh, these people are playing around with us like they're, we're little pawns on a chessboard or something. This is not a game. It is as serious as it gets, and yet these assholes get up as if they own the world, as if we're some inconsequential, uh, non-existent fucking robotic slave class that's just there for, uh, you know, window dressing. Well, the th yeah, exactly, window dressing, but the thing that really blows me out is that they're just telling us about it so blatantly. And look, folks, everything they're doing, I mean, the, the only way it's going to stop is if we do something about it. We have to pay attention to what's going on. We've got to pay attention to what's being said to us. People just aren't paying attention to what's happening in the world. They're not paying attention to what the media is telling them. They're not paying attention to what the politicians are telling them. They're not paying attention to themselves, and they're certainly not paying attention to Gaza. And that's something that very much needs to change. And let's look at these guys, the Near East Studies. Now, if this was just a bunch of, uh, you know, jerk-offs running around with their mouth, you know, then that would be one thing. But these so-called think tanks basically are the formers of policy. Well, let's remember the Project for a New American Century. What did the Project for a New American Century say? They said that ultimately the American people were too fucking stupid to support a global fucking war that would effectively win the empire complete total domination, full spectrum dominance, as they said, that the American people were too stupid. So therefore, we needed a, quote, new Pearl Harbor in order for the American people to be whipped up into a policy that would allow us to invade Iraq, invade Afghanistan, and also start a bunch of wars in the Middle East to be able to create that clash of civilization so whereby we could use all of those billions and billions and billions that we spend on weapons of mass destruction all around the world because, hey, you know, if those things are just sitting in a warehouse collecting dust, that's not very good, is it? we got to use those things, don't we? Yeah, mate, they all cost money. And as I've said so many times before, what we're seeing here, folks, is a breach of trust. Every government in the world is in breach of trust. Every government that supports this is breach of trust. And what we've got to understand is what our relationship with government is, and that is one of fiduciary trust. These are simply trustees that we employ to do a job for us. We employ these people to manage our infrastructure and to ensure that we have peace and prosperity. And here they are saying it's in America's best interests to 